It's time for the build you've all been waiting for. The brand new Radeon 7900 XTX inside of the Hype Y60 with a 13th gen CPU. In case the Christmas sweater didn't quite give it away. In this video, I'll be showing you how to build, I mean, an awesome gaming PC for 2023 at this point. Covering all the parts that make it possible and taking a dive into performance later. Make sure to get subscribed and let's dive into it. <laughs> off by running you through all of the components first of all, building it second and going through the performance in the third and final section of today's video. Let's begin shall we with the CPU and the GPU combo. Now despite what my Christmas sweater might suggest, this video is not sponsored by Intel. Their 13th gen processors are just really, really, really good. The i9-13900K is basically, well it is the best gaming processor you can buy right now. It's cheaper when you account for multiple prices than the Ryzen 7000 alternative and with 24 cores and 32 threads, it is a multi-threaded beast. Single core clock speeds are also really good, nearly 6 gigahertz, making this a superb all-rounder for a system like this one. The Radeon 7900 XTX is the GPU of choice, and to be honest with you, this might just be the best gaming graphics card you can buy right now. While it's not quite as powerful as the 4090, a card that costs $600 more at MSRP, it does beat out the 4080 on the whole, which is a more expensive GPU, and puts AMD back in the running more than ever before in the high-end GPU market. Of course, with this being an Intel platform build, you'll need a Z-Series motherboard. Their Z790 ROG Strix board from Asus is an awesome choice. And of course, in case you can guess, all of the white and silver accents match the colour scheme of this system perfectly. There's not many AIB 7900 XTX options, so the reference black design is the one we're going to have to go for, but we're going to save it with the motherboard. RAM or memory will be provided by a 32GB kit of Corsair's Vengeance RGB Pro. It is DDR4, as our board supports the cheaper DDR4 standard. And despite what you might think, more cost doesn't necessarily mean better. DDR4 and DDR5 provide basically the same performance levels, which is great to see. The SSD in this build will be Samsung's 990 Pro. It's basically the second best gem for for NVMe available, only slightly behind Seagate's Firecuda 530. But of course, the Samsung brand is great to see, and this drive provides impeccable performance for those looking for a super quick Gen 4 NVMe drive. Cooling is provided by the Corsair H150i Elite Capellix, 360mm white all-in-one that's going to look awesome in this build. It's a little bit on the pricey side, but nowhere near as expensive as those with a screen, as this has a standard RGB Capellix water block. The whole build will be built inside of the Height YC. 60, a case that I, well, I owe you all an apology over. It's taken me far too long to get one of these in the studio, having read so many amazing reviews. So I figured today it was time to find out for myself what all of the height is all about. All of the height? Hi. Anyway, terrible, terrible jokes. It's available in a range of different colorways. I've got the white height in the off. Oh, this is great. I'm loving this. It's not actually too tall. It's fairly compact and looks a bit like a fish tank, which is not a bad thing. I'm liking the tempered glass that goes all the way around. The airflow is meant to be pretty top tier and with support for a 360mm rad, an integrated vertical GPU mount, which actually gives you the PCI riser in the box. Great to see. Awesome storage options and a chamber design, which moves the power supply out the way of the front of the case and shoves it in the back. Foot in the front, business in the back. Power will be provided by the Corsair RM850. 850 watts is the recommended amount for a power supply for the 7900 XTX. But if you're going to pick up one of the new AMD cards and are wondering which PSUs are best, check out the articles in the cards now. We've written a full rundown of the best CPUs, cases, and power supplies for both the new AMD cards over on geekawatt.com. Shameless plug, our best month ever last month with over 700,000 visits. Thanks for all the support. Incredible incredible stuff to see. Now then, I've talked through all of the components, links for which, by the way, you can find in the description below. Now it's time to put this thing together. And of course, start off with the motherboard, the CPU, the SSD, and of course, the memory to create a completed motherboard assembly. 
Don't do that to your PC parts. Oh, and also, I've bought some extra fans. Corsair QL Edition. They're expensive, but they're white. And they'll look nice in this system. And you'll see a bit more of these a little bit later. CPU is the first thing to install. If you've never built a PC before, very, very easy. You've just got to line up the triangle on the processor with the triangle on the motherboard socket, which is in the bottom left corner for Intel 13th gen. Bit of pressure and it'll click into place. RAM or memory is next. Just going to pull back the clips on the second and fourth DIMM slot as we have two spare for future upgrades, allowing for up to 64 gigs of future memory. So slot one and slot two. Well, wow. we're actually using the second and fourth slots to give us that optimal dual channel performance. NVMe SSD installation is next up. You can see why they call this the motherboard assembly. It's all the parts that you can do onto the motherboard before it ends up in the case. Drive simply slots into the Asus board, actually upside down, all the text will be the wrong way. Then you add in the tallest clip and pop back on the M.2 heatsink. Tighten it up, both of those screws as we go, and that will help dissipate the heat. You don't want to get a high-end Gen 4 NVMe and not provide it any cooling. So either pick up a board with M.2 heat shielding, that's pretty much all modern motherboard boards or go for the included heat sink drive where you wouldn't return this piece back into place. Only other thing I need to do is add in some of the mounting hardware for the Corsair cooler, but otherwise this thing is ready to move into the case and be installed into the Height Y60. My mentality with the PC case is always take off as many panels as possible. So there's the front panel off. Next up is the rear panel, which is oh, now off, <laughs> hopefully. Aha, that one clips in a bit better. For those of you who might be a bit unfamiliar with this case, let me give you a quick rundown. So you've got three vertical GPU mount brackets. That means you've got support for all the latest graphics cards. You've also got a couple of intake fans at the bottom here, which are dust filtered, pulling air from under the case and then exhaust out the top and out the rear. At the rear, there's a 120 mil fan pre-installed, but I'll be swapping that out for the RGB kind. You've then got room for a 360 mil rad, I believe at the top. Yes, 360 mil round at the top. So we're going to tackle that later. A couple of fans here, which I'm going to add in for show. Maybe put them in an intake config. Hence going for Corsair double-sided QLs where they look good on both sides rather than only looking good on one side. There also looks to be an additional spare fan mount at the bottom. So we could add three more in and it gives you that vertical chimney airflow design. Otherwise, pretty simple. I think the only thing we will need to remove is this bracket, which is screwed into a PCI lane as this will plug into our PCIe on the motherboard. But the motherboard needs installing first. So let me take that out, then slide the board in, screw that into place on all the standoffs, which are already in the right locations, and we should be off to the races. That's a saying in the UK that means we're going to get sh done. What I also need to do is just take the back fan out. I'll have the new fans in later, but take it out for now. It's out the way, and then we can have a go at popping the radiator in. Of course, the radiator is going to go at the top of the chassis. All I've got to do is figure out... Oh, that was easy. How the top panel comes off. You can see there's loads of dust filter mesh integrated into this. I'm not sure how easy it is to clean, but it's definitely there. So that's going to keep all of your airflow nice and fresh, basically. And then I think with a bit of screwdriver action, the radiator bracket just pops off. This is just unbelievable. Credit where credit is due. So intuitive. And all of these parts have been custom tooled for this design. This is not generic. There's also a foam seal around the top here. So when you put the panel on, it all seals up. Attention to detail, top tier. So our Corsair 360mm rad is going to pop into here, a couple of fans on the top, maybe some fans on the bottom for a push-pull config and installs back into the top after the water block has been popped onto the CPU for good measure. This thing is really, really coming together. This is very clever because what's going to happen is the water block is going to slot through the top of the case and then the radiator actually sits on top of the bracket, meaning the whole thing sits in, in theory, a little something like this. Oh yes. Now all that's left to do is to actually screw the bracket in so that obviously it can't do this. But otherwise the fans are on the bottom and that is looking awesome. Not quite enough room for a push pull, but that's fine. This is going to sit nice and flush with the top of the case. And in our instance, everything is working A-OK -okay so far. And then once that's all in, the CPU blocks all screwed onto the CPU. The top of the case can go on, give it a bit of a whack. Maybe a few wax. And that is looking awesome. That is, I'm so excited for this build. Two key components left to install. First is the graphics card, which is going to go in the lovely riser cable space just here. Here it is. Oh, what a beauty. You can read, as I mentioned earlier, the full review of the 7900 XTX we've produced on the website. Will it fit? Of course it'll fit. It's going to just pop down the bottom here in the height Y60. And you're able to see it through the tempered glass side panel looking lovely and pretty. Remove these two screws so the one in the middle and then additionally the one in the back and with a spotter lock it should fit in nice and easy he says oh oh yes a bit of pressure 
And a couple of screws later, and it's basically ready to go. Corsair's RM850 is the final unit, and a couple of easy DIY fab cable extensions will round things off in the best way possible. And with that, it's time to turn this thing on. But first, I've got to say something. Height, fair play. That is the best, most well thought out PC case I have ever ever built in. Other manufacturers take note because this is how you build a case. Let's take a look. build looking awesome, we now need to take a dive into just how well it performs. And I've tested a range of titles on this build to make sure all of the boxes are firmly ticked. Warzone 2.0 first of all at 4K, high settings with FSR set to quality, delivered 143 frames per second on average, providing more than a playable gaming experience. It was a similarly positive story in the likes of Forza Horizon 5, high settings here with FSR 2.2 set to quality, delivered over 100 frames per second with 130 13 FPS on average, while more esports oriented titles like Apex also delivered. 4K, high settings, 204 frames per second on average. Really, really strong results in a game like Apex. The good results carried on rolling through into the likes of Modern Warfare 2, remastered at 4K high with FSR once again set to quality, with 179 FPS on average here. 90 and 90th percentile results were also pretty good, and as ever, we got all of our frame rate data using MSI Afterburners Revertune. Move through into the likes of Fortnite, 315 frames per second was the frame rate of the day at 1080p competitive settings in a game where this card performs very well indeed. Finally, to wrap things up, I also booted up a bit of the new Overwatch 2. 4K ultra settings gave us 217 FPS. If you want some more benchmark detail for this system, check out the full write-up below and our review of the 7900XDX over on geekawatt.com. Thanks for tuning in though, and as always, we'll see you in the next. Geek or Hot video.